today we are here exploring the idea of questioning the impossible. And as I reflected on my identity, I determined that my seemingly impossible would be to stand here in all of my melanated magic as a black woman and be able to live a life that is full and passionate and with the ability to self-actualize, transcending the influence of isms. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The racism, classism, elitism, ageism, everything that can weigh down on your spirit and paralyze your purest potential. It is radical to care for and love yourself unconditionally, to stand in your essence and your truth and live an intentional life that is free from the constraints of fears, assumptions, and expectations. As I stand before you, I am merely a shell that encapsulates everything that I am. I didn't always know who I was, but I had a sliver of guidance through my intuition. I never really thought about or understood my soul until I started my journey. Eight days before my 19th birthday, I was by my mother's hospital bedside, holding her hand. And I told her, you do what you gotta do, it's okay. She passed away, she was 46. It was an unexpected change. And not that I hadn't experienced change or trauma before. I am a survivor of multiple sexual assaults, of abuse. I have dealt with feelings of abandonment, of loneliness, and suicidal thoughts, all at a young age. But losing my mom, that was hard. I battled a deep depression for months. And in those moments of numbness, I determined that my seemingly impossible would be to simply live my life. I could no longer look back at the things that were out of my control. I had to learn how to forgive myself, how to have compassion, and how to be present. I had to know that that was then, and this, this is now. At first, I wanted to start becoming the woman that I know I could be because I wanted to make my mother proud. But through meditation and silencing my mind, I found everything that I needed within me. I have faith that I am more than capable of accomplishing anything that I set my mind to. I had to define how I wanted to feel. I call this my core. My core includes being secure, creative, passionate, observant, at peace, energized, and love. My mother was the greatest love of my life. And when she was not physically here, I learned that everything is temporary. I learned how to fill that void myself so I no longer had to grasp for external gratification. I could no longer cope because that was merely surviving and my impossible called for me to thrive, not just get by. My love is rooted in admiration. So to even love this complexion in a world that dehumanizes and fetishizes me because of it, I had to step back and take the time to educate myself and present myself constantly with positive representations of people of color so that I can learn to value this beautifully intense hue. I had to learn that my body, this curvaceous body, was not an object, but a work of art. I had to speak to myself kindly, interrupting low vibrational thinking. 
and I had to be mindful of how I cared for my temple, what I consumed, whether it be music, food, or people. I could only put time, money, and energy into things that gave me genuine happiness. I learned how to protect my space, my peace. And living intentionally, everything from my career choices to my clothes to my home decor is a carefully displayed extension of my being. I am healing. I am creating and promoting health through the physiological, mind, emotional, body, and spiritual, soul, responses to the stimuli around me. If my energy is not reflective of my core, I must take a risk to make a change and transform. So how do we make that change? Well, first, I had to understand my emotions. For instance, what is anger? Was I feeling isolated or frustrated? When I was able to process my wide range of emotions and understand myself better, it made it easier to understand other people and thus impacted how I interacted with them. A lot of us call that empathy. My impossible, it reminds me of this song that we used to sing in church when I was a little girl. And it goes, I love myself so much that I can love you so much that you can love you so much so that you can start loving me. Now, as we're all on this journey of self-evolution, there is no timeline or guidelines or roadmap, but you have to be committed. And I got to a point that I was so committed to myself because I no longer wanted to be comfortable with the discomfort. You cannot escape things happening to you in your life, but you can control how much of your power you are willing to give up to these situations. Through my journey of understanding myself, I was able to get a better sense that my basic and psychological needs were being met, thus allowing me the time and the space to work on self-actualization and fulfillment. Now, everything is connected. So when we're talking about this idea of leading your life, it becomes a habit. This is a lifestyle. And that's why it's so difficult. <laughs> However, when you're able to do this, you can become a greater leader. Everything is connected. So when you're on this journey, when you work with yourself, it's going to impact how you interact with your family, with your friends, and even your coworkers. So with saying that, we can look at some of these qualities of a leader and connect it to how we lead ourselves in our life. When we're talking about integrity and fairness, are you honest and compassionate with yourself? Do you hold yourself accountable for this journey? Setting clear goals, you have to determine who you want to be, what you're working towards, so that you can strategically make steps in your life to get there. Having high expectations, knowing that you are deserving of the greatest outcomes possible. Encouraging others, creating that space for yourself to evolve, but then also providing that brave space for others. Provide support and recognition. This is mindful intervention within your own life. This is having a feeling of gratitude and positivity. 
stirring the emotions of people. When you're on this journey, it's not easy. When you, when you decide not to cope, when you decide to dig deep, it's dark and it's things that we don't want to face, but you have to face it and you need a support system in order to do that. Getting people to look beyond their self-interest, that's ego. That's all of the systems of oppression that we have. Inspiring people to reach for the improbable, mentoring, leading your life, letting people see how you are, how you behave, inspiring others, giving back, You know, it's very hard to articulate how it feels to be a young black woman in a society that diminishes your humanity and your voice. But through this journey of self-actualization, as cliche as it is, I've realized that my life truly is a blank canvas. And I am an artist. And you know what? I'm going to paint boldly and fiercely and unapologetically, but with nurture and attention to detail. I will be my own greatest masterpiece.